These are the five biggest nutrient deficiencies in the United States, backed by not just science, but hard data, like legit, large-scale hard data. Let's jump right in. The first one is magnesium. It is estimated, based on a study published in PLOS 1, that 60 to 70% of people are deficient in magnesium. That is insanity. There are reasons we could say that the soil is depleted, but let's be real. We are not consuming the foods that are rich in magnesium. The foods that are rich in magnesium are usually going to be the ones that are not as attractive on the surface, deep leafy greens, etc. So what we'll do with all this, we'll talk about symptoms with each thing that you might notice, deficiencies, and then we'll talk about how you can add these foods back in to get these nutrients. What you will notice with magnesium deficiencies, one of the first signs, is leg cramps or muscle cramps that are not associated with exercise. So if you are laying in bed and all of a sudden your leg cramps up, if you go and you reach for some potassium or some sodium, that's not going to solve the problem. That is almost invariably impaired electrical signaling, messed up signal transduction as a result of magnesium. Magnesium is required for the electrical signaling and for the proper contraction and relaxation. Also, irregular heartbeat is a very important one, like almost a spastic style heart, where you're not quite showing up irregular on an EKG, but you're noticing like, okay, I occasionally have these palpitations, and then I occasionally feel like I have an arrhythmia, like what's going on? Again, it's this electrical stability of the heart that magnesium is so imperative for. So pay attention to that because it's very much so noticeable. Mood, you're anxious. You're normally not characterized as an anxious person. When it's onset is fast, that's what you have to worry about. Any kind of mood change that has a quick onset needs to be investigated. Okay, let's talk about how you can add this in. Deep leafy greens, collard greens, bok choy, things like that, super rich sources. Spinach, just cook it so that you're not having the oxalates and the phytic acid breaking down the uh, ability to absorb it. Almonds are another good source, but you really end up going heavy on the calories to get those in. Chocolate, dark chocolate, get like 90, 95% or even 100% dark chocolate. Oats, although I'm a low carb guy and I don't usually say chow down on the oats, if you make like overnight oats with gluten-free, uh, like gluten-free oats and then make them and put them in the fridge, then it's a retrograded RS3 starch, so it doesn't have nearly the glycemic impact, but you still get a ridiculous amount of magnesium. Oats are one of the best sources of magnesium. Otherwise supplemental, go for dimagnesium malate or magnesium glycinate. Okay, that's gonna be bound to glycine and go about 400 to 500 milligrams per day. This next one is iodine. There was a paper in Current Science and Health Journal found that about two billion, with a B, people in the world are deficient in iodine and over 50 million of them are clinically deficient to the point where they would have clinical symptomology. The scary thing with an iodine deficiency is you don't feel it until it's too late a lot of times. And when I say too late, it means you already have aggressive symptoms. It can be restored. The first sign is a visible sign. If you look in the mirror and you have swelling through here, it might look like your thyroid's inflamed, but you don't really know what your thyroid looks like. So you're like, why does it just look super meaty and weird here? That is a big indicator of a thyroid issue. Now, uh, uh, if you know who uh, Tarek is from uh, Tarek and Christina, the flip or flop house show. And one of the people that was watching his show called in and said, hey, you should check out your thyroid because your neck is all swollen. It turned out he had thyroid cancer, but the point is, is that sometimes it takes other people noticing your neck to really understand what's going on. So that's one piece. The other part is you might notice that you're coughing a lot. You might notice that you're wheezing or you have a hoarse voice all the same kind of thing. It's goitrogenic. So essentially what happens when you're low in iodine, your thyroid works hard and it stresses and it gets larger. And this can put pressure on your larynx. It can put pressure on your vocal cords. It changes things. It can put pressure on your airway, sometimes going that way before this way. So you don't always see it. The good news is it's easy to fix. A table salt has iodine, but unfortunately when you go to restaurants and stuff, they're not always using iodized salt. But more importantly, Things like seaweed. One gram of seaweed has 10 times the amount of iodine that you need. But we deplete iodine fast too, especially when we sweat. So you gotta be eating that seaweed or getting it from other sources. Believe it or not, just one egg has about 16% of your daily value of iodine as well. I also put a link down below for a company called Organifi. They have a green juice that I recommend, a green drink. So I take it particularly when I'm traveling. I have a really good diet. I eat a lot of asparagus, a lot of broccoli. I do eat a ton of greens. So when I am traveling, 
is when I particularly use a green drink, but their green drink has all the vitamins and minerals and things that I'm talking about today as well. So that link down below, if you use the code THOMAS2023, at that link down below, you can get 20% off whatever you get from Organifi, whether it's their green drink, they also have their red drink, which has the same thing, but it's with fruits without the sugar. So you can get like all the antioxidant polyphenols of like nine or 10 different fruits without the sugar, only two grams of total sugar in the whole thing. So that's epic. And they also have some cognitive blends and a couple other really cool things as well. So again, Thomas2023 with that link down below in the description. Next one is one that's talked about a lot, but we don't always know these obscure symptoms and that's vitamin D. So vitamin D we know based upon some studies published in nutrition research, large scale, 42% of the population is deficient in vitamin D. 82% of the black population is deficient in vitamin D in the United States. And those numbers are even larger if they don't consume dairy and get some small amounts of vitamin D that way. So how do you know? One, you're getting sick a lot, but also your sicknesses are lasting longer. There is a study that looked at 25 trials that found when vitamin D was simply added back in, the instance of respiratory infections decreased significantly. Mood swings, once again, anytime you start noticing like you're going extremes, it's okay to get sad. It's okay to get depressed. It's okay to get anxious. But when you have these monumental swings all the time, that is problematic and it's just one more nail in the coffin. This is a relatively new one, pain. You're sensitive to pain. You stub your toe, it hurts five times more than it used to. Like what is going on? Random muscle aches and pains. Turns out we have vitamin D receptors in our, or vitamin D active in our pain receptors. So what that means is that when you are deficient in vitamin D, your pain receptors are overactive. So your headaches are worse. If I flick you in the ear, it's gonna hurt more. So that's a very telltale sign. Obviously, things like eggs, things like fish, things like sardines, tremendous sources of vitamin D. The sun is your best possible source, hands down. Dietary sources are decent, but the conversion rate is bleak compared to what you get from the sun. Uh, mushrooms, things like that, and plant sources, vitamin D2, still can convert into 25-hydroxy uh, uh, vitamin D, but it's a lot more of a process. It takes about two to three, even four times, depending on the person, the amount of plant-based vitamin D to turn into true vitamin D3. And last but not least, you would never ever think with all the fortification, with all the sugar, with all the citrus, with all the orange juice, you would never think that we have a vitamin C deficiency problem in this country. But 17% of adults are vitamin C deficient and only 6% of kids are. Interesting, why? because kids are usually pounding orange juice and we fortify kids' foods with a bunch of stuff. I'm not condoning fortification. I think we should get whole foods. But the point is, is that kids are getting supplemented this stuff. Adults are not. So vitamin C deficiency, scurvy y'all, is a real thing. What do you notice? You're getting sick more often, but more importantly, everyone else in your house gets sick and then you stay sick longer. What's going on? Inability to fight off. Vitamin C really comes into effect when you are actually tackling the pathogen after it has begun its reign in your body. Your skin looks like crud, like really bad, dry, poor collagen. Your skin just looks bad and patchy and scaly. Okay, that's another big one. Your wound healing is terrible. Like you get a scratch and it just doesn't heal, especially in the extremities. You're just not getting this healing effect. Also has to do with collagen as well. So yes, vitamin C supplementation. I do not recommend absorbic acid. I recommend getting it in like whole fruit form supplementation, like acerola fruit. There's some really good companies that make good vitamin C in like a whole food form, but red bell pepper, a half a cup has almost two times the amount you need of vitamin C in a day. Oranges, sure, but you have so much sugar along with it. I would opt for kiwis, a little bit better option there. And also broccoli, even though it doesn't seem like a vitamin C rich food, it's one of the most potent. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out that link down below for Organifi, and I'll see you tomorrow.